So, Andy and Ico, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's it's an iPhone. It's that's the, that's the thing about this. Right now, behind me at the demo area, right there, uh, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of analysts who are looking at this phone and seeing that it is, in fact, an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, when you look at it, the only things you, you uh, the, the the line of death is still there, at least visually. I don't know if they fixed it internally, but at least there visually. Uh, if you turn around and look at the back, you do notice that it's missing that whole line of international certif- uh, uh, electronic certifications. Uh, I believe that's because this is this specific model that we're seeing behind there is actually just for the U.S. market only. It is not for international markets. Uh, I've been told that the units that we've been looking at are actual production units. They're not just engineering samples. They're not just FCC testing samples. So that's supposedly the actual final thing. The only thing that you will actually notice when you start taking a look through it is that there is that wonderful uh, wireless hotspot feature uh, somewhere, in the, uh, somewhere in the settings panel uh, that will let you share the 3G uh, signal uh, across either Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or USB. Although uh, one consistent measure throughout the entire afternoon was they are not going to talk about any pricing of any wireless server of it, service of any kind. So no news yet on whether that will be bundled into your digital package or if that's something you have to pay an extra 20 bucks a month for or whatever. Andy, maybe you can uh, answer a couple of questions. There's some confusion because the Verizon site lists uh, GSM as well as CDMA. It seems pretty clear that there is this is not a dual band phone. Absolutely not. That was an explicit question. Uh, it is a CDMA-only phone. As a matter of fact, a lot of people had been suspecting that it's going to be a, like a that there's going to be a way for it to use the LTE network. Uh, but Tim Cook said in two different answers to questions said that the Apple's priority was to get this out there and get this available to the people who wanted it, and they felt as though they weren't willing to wait for. Uh, I'd have to go back to my notes to see exactly what he said. He said something curious about it. He wasn't willing. There are trade-offs that they were, I believe he said there are trade-offs that Apple was not willing to make uh, to have an LTE iPhone at this juncture. And so they decided uh, to go with CDMA. He also uh, a- explicitly referred to the, uh, the data versus voice switchover problems as a trade-off that customers, he felt, were going to be willing to make. So nice that they're actually referred to it as a trade-off as opposed to part of the Apple Magical suite of features. Yeah. There also is some question this, from the same old content that Verizon's pulling in on their page. There's a white iPhone. Did anybody ask about that? No one asked about it, and there are no iPhones uh, in presence here at all. So I'm just going to assume that it's a, 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 the same kind of mistake. They're pulling in old Apple content, and nobody's vetted it, and they're just dumping it on us. Uh, uh, pardon me? It, it, it's just a mistake on the uh, Verizon page, obviously. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other question from our chat room. I don't know if anybody addressed it there or has addressed has, has answered you. Visual voicemail? Uh, I did not test that out. I probably should right now. Uh, but they were, both Verizon and Apple were explicit saying that feature for feature, this is the exact same phone. So uh, with the difference, of Tim, uh, Tim Cook later on did rush to mention that there is that new uh, hotspot feature, but uh, every feature, including FaceTime, you could expect to have on an iPhone 4 would also be present on the I, on the Verizon iPhone 4. It's going to be so. interesting to watch them make that FaceTime handoff, of course, because FaceTime is a, it uses data, but is initiated with a phone call. Yeah, there's a, if, unfortunately, they, they called on the guy next to me and not uh, the guy on me. Uh, what I really wanted to know was what kind of changes did they make to, the, to Verizon's infrastructure to make sure that all of these advanced features were actually going to work. Uh, they did mention about uh, how they have put in what they feel to be more bandwidth, extra bandwidth than they could possibly ever need. Let's see if that actually turns out to be what be true. Uh, and mostly they were talking about speed and uh, extra load, and also the extra load on all the Verizon stores, hopefully with people are rushing in to buy the iPhone. They didn't mention anything about anything they had to add to the infrastructure of the network to add features like visual voicemail, to add features like FaceTime. So the blanket statement that they made was that this is going to be exactly the same experience on the iPhone 4 uh, for Verizon as for the, uh, as for the uh, AT&T model. So let's see if they try to back out of that in a month when people actually start, uh, start playing these things. Any other thoughts or surprises, Andy? Not really. This was, uh, I, I, kind of, I kind of figured this was going to be a very, very short event where everybody had the, it's where all the, it's, uh, it's, it's, I, I kind of likened it a little bit to uh, when NASCAR uh, finds a new driver. You have to have that event where the driver takes the microphone and gets his picture taken, thanking the sponsors and thanking the profs, the, thanking, and, and welcoming the partnership. And the corporate sponsors have to have their, their moment on camera saying, thanking the partners or what, how honored they are and pleased they are to have this new agreement. 
Uh, so it really was just one, two, three, four, get the pictures done, go to the demo area, and that's pretty much it. So if, uh, they, I'm, very, I'm just glad that they didn't decide to sneak in demos of all their Android stuff now that they've got the captive <laughs> audience. Actually, actually the, the only surprise was when, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to self-censor, was when, like, we're, it's about five minutes before the start of the event, and we're all just sort of, like, in our seats, like, making sure our Twitter feeds and our, uh, all our software is working. And then we hear some guy leap up and shout, F yeah. Oh, boy. And I'm like, okay, I didn't know there was an open bar. Oh. I just thought there was just a mini muffin. <laughs> uh, and then I, I'm looking around trying to figure out exactly what had happened. And then after about 30 seconds, I recognized John Oliver of The Daily Show. All right. So obviously <laughs> taping a piece for The Daily Show. Yes. So yeah. And apparently, and this is, this is why his is the job I would like to have least of all. Apparently something technically must have gone wrong because five minutes later, he did it all over again. Oh, dear. We'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> and the I, F, I, yeah, kind of loses its sting the second time around, doesn't it? I, 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 look, I, I look back, like, another few minutes later, and I just see him just sort of, like, quietly, like, listening to this to his oh. earpiece. The meekest guy, like, please don't make me do that again. again? <laughs> they're not politicians. They're, they're the actual tech journalists who really care about what they're doing. They're not used to being made tomfoolery of by our, by our lot. Most of these people are beautiful listeners. Come on. <laughs> So uh, to recap, uh, it is a Verizon iPhone. It is CDMA only. It uses the 3G network only. It will drop calls if you uh, try to use data. You can't do both. To correct myself, of course, FaceTime is Wi-Fi only. So the signaling is done by a call, but there shouldn't be any difficulty yes. going to Wi-Fi directly from a call. That's not the but, same as the 3G issue. Well, it's not quite the same, but remember that the, the whole goal of FaceTime is to make the handoff between a voice call and... Uh, and FaceTime as seamless as possible. Right. So that would tend to imply that we're on the network that handles that transfer, unless it's all being done peer to peer. I'm afraid I don't know whether that's the case or not. Right. But unfortunately, that is a question I would have loved to have asked. Like, what did they have to? Did they have to cross the blue wire with the red wire in order to make the iPhone and all of its software features work fine? Uh, because Verizon is not a co Verizon is a company that will take Android phones and modify them the way that they want them to work on their network. They're not used to coming in with a, with a phone manufacturer who says, here are our requirements for what we need at the back end for all these features. We're starting to get shots now from that room behind you. I'm going to let you go to that room. I'm sure you'd like to spend some more time with the new Verizon iPhone. Uh, thank you, Andy Anako. As always. Mac Break like Weekly coming up in a couple of hours. We'll get you back and we'll talk more. Okay. Take care. Andy Anako uh, from the event. These are the pictures coming in now from uh, Engadget because there is, as always, a hands-on event. In fact, you can, you can see it there in the background uh, going on. And uh, as always, uh, uh, there's a chance to compare the two. And these are the pictures from Engadget comparing the two. And there's only a couple places you can see the difference in the antenna. This is one. There isn't a line there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 I think the phone call antenna break is on the left side. I think that's the 3G antenna break. And that would make sense that they would have to adjust that antenna. That's the Wi-Fi antenna break, I thought. But uh, I'm not sure. So uh, this, this, the side, the left side, where the grip of death happens is exactly the same. And it is my understanding that that's where the phone antenna is. So it's not an adjustment for the phone antenna. It's probably an adjustment for the data that they've made. Here's the Wi-Fi hotspot information. Via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and he's now walking through the crowd. And if he keeps that live, we're going to keep on it because we'd be able to get a secret look at what's going on. And he's using his iPhone for this, Skype. by the way, via yep. Skype, not FaceTime. And there it is. You're seeing it for the first time. That is the Verizon iPhone. Looks exactly like the AT&T iPhone with the really very yeah. few exceptions. Yeah, it's my, wind, it's my car window mount. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's very clever. Uh, clever dual use of it. also makes my car mount tax deductible. It comes up with what now? It also makes my car mount tax deductible. <laughs> <laughs> So Andy's uh, looking now at the uh, menus in there, and particularly, I'm sure, looking at the hotspot menu. Right. So here's, here, here's the personal hotspot feature right at the top of the settings menu. So it really is simple to set up. You just tap it and then turn it on, and it will just simply oops, now tell me personal hotspot will only be available over Bluetooth and USB. Do you want to enable it over Wi-Fi? And so I turn on Wi-Fi. 
getting a nod. And I can, okay, so I can assign a password I want, whatever password I want to secure this, this ad hoc network. Uh, you, you can, exactly. Uh, right now we've got it set to, you know, I mean, like to keep it that way. Right, I will. <laughs> Don't change the password, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and will it work the same way that uh, my MiFi works, where it is actually to any other computer on the network, it is an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. So if I wanted to use this as a way to like do IM between two different computers, it will act as a bridge between those two uh, machines on the network. Uh, when you say, well, as it, when you say bridge, I mean basically, I'm, this I, will show up. Yeah. So this will show up to your your computer uh, as a in, in a list of Wi-Fi uh, devices, Wi-Fi AP networks. It would show up, uh, the name that you've given your iPhone 4, uh, or iPhone 4, would show up, and you would just type in a password, and you would uh, access it via Wi-Fi. Okay. So, uh, but what, what I mean is that if I have, uh, it's, if I had like an airport extreme base station, all the things I can do if I have an airport extreme base station in the room, mean except for connecting to the internet. Like if I wanted to do like a iChat between my MacBook and and my uh, my iMac in the room, it will just it will just function as a regular base station. Uh, yeah, additional that. I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And, so and, that's, and, that's how it works with the MiFi. Very good. Yeah. And and as was explained uh, earlier, um, up to five. Five connections. Now, is, is there any pricing information on whether or not that'll be a, an, an added feature, or whether that's just something you get with the, your data plan? So that is a great question for the Verizon uh, okay. representative, and oh. I happen to have one right. Oh, hi. Very good. Uh, I'm just looking at the, my. I'm Andy Anako. I'm streaming this to Mac Break Weekly for an interview. I'm with the Chicago Sun Times, but I, I, I double dip. Uh, uh, but, so I'm, I'm talking about the personal hotspot feature. Now, is this going to be uh, an add-on feature, uh, or is it, it going to be part of my basic charge, uh, as part of my basic data plan? I we'll have to pay extra to get the personal hotspot feature on the iPhone 4. I believe it will be part of the basic plan. Part of the basic plan, so no added cost for it. Right. Right. So I understand. Okay. Well, here, do you have any information on what what do you uh, what changes? Apart from getting ready for all this extra data and all these extra consumers, did did Rise have to make to the network in order to get ready for the iPhone? And because, for instance, there's so when AT and T launched, they talked about how to get the visual voicemail working. They made it; they added extra infrastructure so that it would know how to process an iPhone transaction, a voice transaction like that. Did you guys have to make any sort of change like that at your network level to make sure that added features on the iPhone would function or? I think, that, I think the major thing we did was just ramp up the capacity, right? and, we, and we've been doing that for years. Uh, from our perspective, it's really the demand that we're trying to stay ahead of, so we have enough headroom. Right. To, 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 and I think from, from our perspective, just that consistent investment year after year is to make sure when we do have the additional customers on, like we're able to meet the demand that we're going to stay, so we know what's going to Okay, but it is feature for feature the exact same experience. Apart from the extra feature of the personal Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm going to I'd let this gentleman Very talk good. to that. I, I could talk to the network piece, but I'd like okay. to I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get your I didn't Sheldon get your name. Jones. Sheldon Jones. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for talking to us. So it is, so it is feature for feature the exact same experience. So, uh, for, iPhone 4. Yeah. This is an iPhone 4 on Verizon. All of the great hardware features from the, the beautiful retina display, uh, the A4 processor inside, all the, uh, the gyroscope. Uh, on the back, you've got the 5 mx camera that you know, uh, iPhone 4 that you, um, that you uh, have on your AT&T network up to now. Um, big um, HD video. Uh, you know, but in the other hardware, you'll see on the bottom, it's got the same speaker, mic, 30 pin connector for the uh, you know, iPhone ecosystem. Um, but no, it's an iPhone 4 on Verizon. Hmm. So FaceTime, I, I can be, oh, actually, no, that wouldn't, that, uh, so, what, so, what, so what happens if I'm, if I'm uh, having a phone call over FaceTime? Uh, excuse me, a regular, regular, uh, regular voice phone call. Uh, well, I still simply tap a button and go to FaceTime. Uh, if you're, uh, in a okay. That's not affected by the CDMA limitation. I guess it wouldn't be. Yeah. Same as long as I'm on Wi-Fi, of course. And same thing as on the iPhone. Four. It is an iPhone. Yeah, okay. That's uh, that's that's what I was. That, that's what that's what I was talking, telling the studio about earlier. Before this is this is the, 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 the stunning display of about a hundred industry analysts looking at exactly the same phone that they've been talking about for the past six months, pretty much. Now, I, I, one thing I did notice is like the ball at the bottom is missing like the international 
like certifications like the CE mark. Now, is that piece that this is just a U.S. only phone, or is it a, a production sample that hasn't actually been certified yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah the marking is not a yeah. production sample. Okay, so it isn't production. Okay. Those markings are there for uh, this phone that's on the Verizon CD name. Okay. Um, now you will notice that the, the marks, as like you notice, the, as you noted, the, the markings are slightly different. Okay. Um, that's because uh, you know, it, it's, the hardware is on different networks, and it has different markings for different uses around the, uh, around the world. Some of those markings in the, the AT and T uh, iPhone for different regions. I did notice this not a trace, just like with the AT and T phone. There's not the only place you can see the Verizon logo is in the carrier lot at the top of the top of the menu. So it's not like you there's a Add logo added to the actual artwork on the case is still just the Apple logo, and that's it. Yeah. Exactly the same phone. Great. Any other questions from the studio? Yeah, we have uh, two questions that people are asking. Uh, one is, is there going to be a white iPhone? And number two is, is un the unlimited plan truly unlimited? Uh, first question is, uh, any news on a white iPhone? There's, there's actually, uh, someone pointed out earlier that on the Verizon site, with the, with the first information about uh, the, uh, the Verizon iPhone, they actually showed images of the white iPhone and the black iPhone, leading some people to think that you guys were going to have access to the white iPhone before anybody else. So is there any news about the, the, the white color of the iPhone being an option for Verizon users? Spring. Spring. White iPhone coming in spring is based for Okay, that's, I'm sorry, that's, that's from Apple, not from Verizon? Spring. Okay. So? Uh, no news except for just regular what they're saying about yeah. white iPhones coming in spring. And um, what was your second question? Uh, the second question is: is is the uh, they have an unlimited plan listed on the uh, on the website, and people are curious about whether unlimited is really going to mean unlimited. Um, actually, it's probably another Verizon question. Uh, on the website, there's a, there's limitations. On the website, there's uh, uh, for sign-up options. There's also notation of an unlimited plan. So is it, is it going to be possible to get unlimited data for the Verizon iPhone? Okay, not, but, but pricing aside, will it be possible to purchase at whatever price on limited data? I'm not sure I understand. Okay, there's that meaning, uh, uh, on the web, uh, my, my studio is telling me that they're, they've looked at the Verizon website for the page, information page about the iPhone 4, and that among the options that are listed as data plans is that one option will be on limited. Data Okay. Now, actually, it, it comes to mind that when I reviewed a previous, a previous Verizon phone, they told me it was unlimited, and then I made sure I knew exactly what that meant and said that unlimited meant five gigabytes capped per month. Now, do you know if that means unlimited data, meaning I can watch Netflix videos all day long? Our current smartphone plan, $29.99. Okay, so the current smart, I'm sorry, what's the current name? Smartphone the current smartphone plan is $29.99, and that is unlimited. Meeting start on day one and start streaming Netflix, stop on day three, and they don't care. Okay. So that's like so like I said, I mean that really is it. Again, it is completely but it's I, I suppose the fair thing to say is that it is remarkable in how unremarkable it is. <laughs> that it is again just a plain uh, just just a regular iPhone. Including the gap of depth, uh, with no information about the antenna redesign except for it being redesigned specifically for CDMA. But again, the only differences that you can really see are uh, the lack of bullet plate in the bottom there, and I'm told that that's not necessarily because uh, this is a USA-only phone, but because these are the phones that are here. Uh, I haven't, on the demo stand, there are a bunch of third-party apps uh, arranged in folders, uh, but I'm told that, uh, the rig, that the shipping phone will just come with a standard suite of uh, iOS apps. There won't be any special Verizon apps. There won't there will be a, like a FIOS app pre-installed. It will be bog standard, exactly the same experience as when you uh, take out a, an AT&T phone out of the box. 